The Joseph Priestley House was built in 1798 after Priestley and his family emigrated here from their home in England. Today, we're going to take you on a tour of the house, so let's hand it over to the docents. Welcome to the Joseph Priestley House. We're so glad you came to visit us today. Right now, I'm standing in the courtyard. We have a replica of the barn that was here when Joseph Priestley lived in the house. As you're coming to the house, you would be greeted by paid servants. And in here, you would come in this front main entrance. This is the foyer area. You, of course, would wait here to be announced to the family that you had come to visit. The first room that you're going to go into will be the library where Dr. Priestley spent a lot of his time. We were greeted by Ron Blatchley, a retired chemistry teacher who, for 27 years, has portrayed Joseph Priestley during special events at the house. Uh, he had here everything that he really needed for day-to-day -day business. He had his desk over here with writing materials. Uh, he had books above that. Actually, all of the walls were lined with books. Uh, he had a day bed there so he could take a nap. And in his later years, he actually slept uh, on that. He, pretty much lived in this room the last couple of years of his life. Each room in the house features artifacts or reproductions that give a glimpse into Priestley's life. The house itself has interesting architectural features not seen in today's modern construction. The windows here also have these, these very nice shutters, which are on the inside, and would have closed like that, but when open, they fold into the frame of the, of the window and virtually disappear. The uh, entrance to the laboratory is through this jib door. The jib door is actually a window. It's made to look like a window. So the window slides up and down, and the door is down here, uh, which when closed and with the sash down, looks just like the other windows in the room. In Priestley's laboratory, Blatchley gave us a little more history about Joseph Priestley the man. In this very room, he discovered carbon monoxide. It was the only one he did here. The rest of them were all done back in England. Uh, he was born in, uh, in England, uh, in the north, near, near Leeds, near the town of Burstall, in 1733. And he was uh, raised there. Uh, he was raised to be a clergyman. That was determined right off the bat that he was going to be a clergyman and he always considered himself a clergyman during his entire life. He met Ben Franklin, and Franklin talked to him about electricity. And Priestley became so interested in it that he borrowed some materials, some books, some apparatus from Franklin, and he started doing his own original experiments, ended up writing uh, the definitive book on on electricity. Political views were also very, very contentious. He supported the French Revolution and the American Revolution. Now that didn't make him unique in England by a long shot, but it didn't make him very popular with the, the ruling authorities. And so in uh, 1791, on the anniversary of the uh, of Bastille Day, the first anniversary of Bastille Day, an angry mob stormed his house his church, they burned them to the ground, destroyed everything that he had. Uh, and he, he and, and Mary, his wife, and the rest of the family barely escaped with their lives. That fire sent the family to London for a few years, but by then Priestley was such a controversial figure in England that a move to America seemed wise. He came out here to just kind of find a quiet place to retire. Here in Northumberland, uh, Priestley uh, was able to build this very comfortable house. It was the largest, uh, grandest house in town by a long shot. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Mary never got to live in the house. She died before it was finished. Priestley continued to conduct experiments and even set up classes for children in the town, which he taught in his home. He, he was. He was an inveterate writer. He was always writing something. And uh, he, he wrote, uh, during his lifetime, dozens of books on, uh, most on, on religious topics, theological uh, topics, but uh, many on scientific topics. 
Just across the hall from the library is the Priestley's Parlor. In this room, the Priestley's Drawing Room or Parlor, uh, they entertained their guests. They also uh, used it for Sunday church services because they didn't have a structure for the Unitarian workshop at that time. Unitarians were a small minority, but Dr. Priestley was their leader and um, they would have uh, those services here. In addition to telling me about the room, Mrs. Brooke told me about Priestley's place in the world in the 1790s. I think we need to talk sometimes about how famous Priestley was at the time. Oh, really? Um, you know, he was a world-renowned uh, figure, and uh, some people thought he was uh, you know, a dangerous radical. Um, actually, he was a very mild-mannered person, uh, but his, his thinking was very advanced. He was a very progressive thinker. He was sort of a refugee, a political refugee, in mm -hmm. fact, when he came to this part of the country. Um, but uh, his, his fame spread before him. From the parlor, we moved on to the kitchen. It is likely the Priestleys had an iron cooktop heated by wood in their kitchen, since they had one in England. There's even a warming oven at the side of the main fireplace. The back kitchen is where much of the messier food preparation was done, and it has its own very special feature. But the house has its own well, and it's right in here. Wow! And so if you were a servant here, it was quite a bit easier than in some places, because most places people were walking to a well outside the house. The last room to visit downstairs is the dining room. This is the, the main dining room of Dr. Priestley's house. And this actually room was used not only for eating, but the, when the groups would get together, they would sit here sometimes for several hours because if there was friends or visitors passing through, that's when they exchanged information from around the town and from Philadelphia, New York. A key feature in this room is an artifact that actually belonged to the Priestleys. There's not too many pieces of furniture that actually belong to the Priestleys here because most of them have been lost. But this clock is, is one of them. Upstairs, one bedroom has been restored to look as it would have for Mrs. Priestley, Dr. Joseph Priestley's daughter-in-law. She became the head of the household when Mary Priestley died. She would do all her menu writing over there. She would write to all her friends in England. Mm -hmm. And you can see different things she would teach the children, all about the plants and fauna in the area. They learned to tat, they learned to knit. The boys learned to knit too. There was too much to do for one woman, so the boys did as much as the girls. If uh, Mrs. Priestley had company, they would come up here and have tea. They considered this area the women's area. This clock is another that belonged to Joseph Priestley. It was presented to him by the French general Lafayette. Over the years, the Priestley house changed hands several times. Fortunately, very little was altered on the inside, so it still appears much as it did when it was built in 1798. The exterior did have a porch added at some point, which was later removed, and the picket fencing was replaced with the more accurate solid wood fence that you see today. With so much history right here in our backyard, it was disappointing to residents when the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission announced its intentions last year to close the Priestley House. In April, we had a public meeting in Northumberland. Had 160 people come. Everybody voiced their desire to see the site open. But regardless, in April, in August, the site was closed. The Friends Board acted upon the wishes of area residents and worked to reopen the Priestley House. After the site was closed, we started negotiations on running the site with volunteers. Uh, volunteers that the Friends would uh, uh, administer. We would organize them, we would make sure they showed up, we would train them. The state still owns and maintains the site, but there are no longer any state employees at the facility. The uh, Friends of the Priestly House operate the site with volunteers. We're always looking for volunteers. They can work at the, uh, help us out at the visitor center. They can help us out at special events, as I mentioned, the summer history camp. We could train them to be docents. We are uh, in agreements with the state. We do minor kind of work around the grounds here, some gardening work that we can use volunteers for those purposes. We can use volunteers to help us uh, uh, with the books and the, and, the, and the gift shop. We're always interested in volunteers. In July, the Priestley House opens its doors to first through fifth graders for history camp. It's a morning camp from nine till noon. 
in the midday we provide them a stack a snack and each day is has a different uh, overall theme to it the last day of the camp we introduce the campers to dr priestley in his laboratory and he does a magnificent job of explaining chemistry to elementary school children with uh, stinky things and loud things and so the kids just love the show special events also bring lots of activity and visitors to the joseph priestley house Three times a year, we do very special events at the house. Uh, on Charter Day, which is when Commonwealth of Pennsylvania was formed, we have all our docents come that day in costume and are spread throughout the house in every room. You walk into the, you do the tour on your own. You walk into a room and there's a docent there that would explain that to you. We do that on Commonwealth Charter Day, on Heritage Day, which is the first Sunday in November, and then on the 12th day, which is the first Sunday in the new year uh, where you have those kind of special presentations you have ron blatchley in the laboratory and the docents in the, each room there is so much more to learn about the life of joseph Priestley. i encourage you to spend an hour at the museum to discover more about this fascinating pennsylvanian well that does it for this episode of in your neighborhood remember if you have a story idea you can send it to me at jen wakeman at ccn-news.com and be sure and check out our Facebook fan site. I'm your host, Jennifer Wakeman. Thanks for watching.